What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video tutorial. Today we have a very simple script. We have a, I guess, semi-complex UI um, that I quickly take you through. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look at what we're gonna have in the end. This is a start menu that has a um, smoothing mechanic on it. So you can see I'm going from one place to another. Now it doesn't matter where you place your thing because um, the script actually records that at the beginning. So if my option menu, which is you know down here and it's empty, or if it's my shop, if they're like all the way there, it doesn't matter because my script will actually remember and take us all the way over there. So you can create your, pa your pages in any kind of order you want. You just press on the button, it goes there. Right now I don't have smoothing enabled. So if I go here, enable smoothing again, and it looks a little bit like that. So guys, this is what we'll be doing today. Hope you enjoy and let's get right into it. So here we are with a menu scene. Now I'll quickly go through this scene, and actually show you what's in there. I do not want to make it in front of you. It would take too long and, and it's too much UI stuff. So let me just quickly explain what is going on. I am, the first thing is I am actually building towards mobile right now. So I'm targeting Android, which means I was able to switch this in portrait mode. So I'm using 1920 by 1080 in portrait. Um, with that being said, my main canvas, the one that con like contains everything basically, has a canvas scaler with a reference resolution of 1080 by 1920, exactly like um, this thing at the top here. So having that said, um, I do have things in the background that are not part of the canvas. So if I mute that, you're gonna see over here, those are my trees, my back trees, my cloud. Uh, basically, I have a scene exactly set up the same exact way we had in the, um, the scrolling and parallax tutorial. So when I press on start, my scrolling parallax script takes care of that and actually places um, these objects. If I move my camera around, you know, we get a little bit of parallax going on. So that's not gonna be used today. It's just for background effect. Now the canvas itself has a object that contains everything. I call it the menu container, and that's gonna be very important for our script. This means that um, the way I'm gonna be making this is that every single thing beneath this, so every children of menu container has its own we could call it page. And with those pages in mind, we'll be able to move our canvas around and actually just show that page. Like I have the main page, which is just these three thing. You see them here on the right hand side. Um, but if I go over to shop, then I will only see this and I won't see that at all. That is my goal today. And if we want, what we could do is simply right here, since I'm there, why not? I'm going to duplicate main, call it say option. And we'll, we can have a page that says option. And the best thing about this script is that, hey, it could be here, it could be um, there, it doesn't matter. In fact, you know what, let's just put it like in diagonal down here, uh, all loose and all not cool and see if it works. I'm quickly just gonna go in there and edit out a couple of things. I'm gonna remove everything and just add, say, my back button. Um, there it is. And maybe swap it around too. Okay, um, this is just for testing purpose, guys. So let's quickly dive into these. Those are all button and they have text beneath it. So if you can see, they're like much wider than they should be. And that's because this is a button with no graphics on it. So um, if you disable this, you're still able to press it. It's still a button. It just doesn't have any graphics on it. Um, usually when you have a button, it comes to an image and it looks something like that. And then you have your text in front. Um, I don't have that. I disabled the image. I'm pre pretty sure I made myself clear at this point. Um, so those are buttons. All of them are buttons. They're currently not linked because we don't have a script. On the right hand side over here, I have my shop. Um, inside of my shop, I have a shop container with a bunch of items. They're all being ordered with a grid layout so I can add them as much as I want. And you know, they're going to be placed properly. And on top of my shop, I of course have a back button, which is the same concept as down here. So Without further ado, let's create a script that's going to control our whole thing. And before that, I will create an object, call it menu controller. And that is my object, my empty object right now that will control everything. So I have a script down here called start menu. I'll drag and drop this on top. Um, this script will be handed out in a package. So if you want it, you can find it in the package. It's not a very long one. It's actually quite, quite a small one, but you'll see the logic behind it. Um, I also want to hand out the scene. That's why I'm making a package today. So having that said, let's see, what do we need exactly in here? We are going to need a reference first. That reference is going to be the menu container. Where exactly 
is our menu container. So we'll need the menu container to know exactly um, which object should we scan for our children and then where are we supposed to position our camera if we go to these menus. Well, a little bit more on that in a second. Um, I'm gonna go down here and declare a private vector three at the same time. That's gonna be a private vector three array, actually there's gonna be multiple one of menu positions. What is this? That's gonna be the position, the initial position of all the menus in your scene. That's gonna be very useful to us because at one point we'll be moving the canvas and they won't have their original um, position anymore. Oh, by the way, I like to do these headers, but really in this case, they're useless. Like I haven't mentioned that before, but they're useless. They're only useful when you can see those fields in the inspector. It puts like a nice little separator, you call it. But this case right here, you don't actually see it in the, <laughs> you don't actually see it in the inspector. So having this header is useless. I just want to point that out uh, because nobody has pointed that out to me just yet. And I'm sure it's going to come in the future. <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to add a new, a new header over here. I didn't do that in, in the, my preview code before I'm making this video, but let's actually add a smoothing logic to it. So I went ahead and I declare myself a smooth uh, boolean and also a smooth speed, um, just in case we wanna we wanna scroll our camera over time and not just like snap it exactly where it should be. It could be nice. I don't know. You guys can test it out. You'll see how it looks like with just a simple toggle now. Okay. Having that said, now it's time for us to actually fill in these logics. So fill in these menu position. How do we do that? Well, at the start, let's go ahead and grab, let me actually grab my code here and I can explain it better without typing on my loud keyboard. Um, so at the start over here, we're going to take our new array, the one we declared, we're going to say, hey, uh, since you're an array and you're not a dynamic list, you're not something that's going to be dynamic and we're not going to be creating menus like in the runtime, Let's go ahead and declare yourself like X amount of slots. So how many slots do you need in your array? Well, you need as much as the menu container has children. So we say, hey, menu position is equal to a new vector array. How many do we need? As many as menu containers children count. So this is what we do on the first line over here. And then um, what I do is I get the half screen. So how big is your screen? And then we're going to divide that by two because the way it's going to work, it's not going to center your camera on top of the right menu. It's going to put it in, in the bottom left corner um, because that's where the, the actual coordinate starts. So the anchoring is kind of weird on a canvas and that, that's what I, I do over here to overcome that. But I am not 100% sure. I think we can get around that if we actually set a different pivot point. Let's try it with it and then I'll try and, and, and work some magic. So let's see, what do we have here? Mini transform dot length. Um, yeah, instead of mini transform, I was going to put menu position. So one, what we're doing right here is we're going through all the children's of menu container and then we're taking their position and we're reducing that by half screen. And that's going to be, we're basically just filling our array basically. <laughs> so now we have all the information we need to make this work. However, we don't have any trigger. We don't have any public function that calls this. We don't have um, anything to trigger or logic. So let's go ahead and declare ourselves public void move menu. That's what we'll be calling when we click on buttons. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll be calling pretty much all the time if we want to move to a different menu. Um, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to give in a ID. So if we put say, well, if the first children of your menu container is the start menu, the initial one, then that's ID zero. If the second one is shop, that's ID one. And of course, that takes a little bit of uh, you need to remember that. And of course, when you test it out, you'll see it. <laughs> so um, what do we do over here? Well, we say, hmm, we could say that the desired position, because right now we don't have any desired position. Let's go here. Private vector three. Desired position. I'm thinking about my smoothing. That's why I'm, I'm a bit late on that. And that would be equal to minus menu position at the index ID. Y minus, because as I've said, um, we have a little bit of anchoring problem and we start basically on the wrong side of, of the pivot system. Um, you'll see that my gizmo right now is right in the center and that's not necessarily what you need. Uh, you'll have to experiment a little bit with anchors before you know. Um, just so you know, basically, what we're gonna be doing in our code is we're not gonna be moving the camera, we're not gonna be moving any of that because if we move the camera, our UI doesn't care. Our UI stays the same, right? Um, what does care is our menu container. So that is the one we're going to be moving around and that will move the whole thing like this. 
So let's do a private void update. Now, what I was gonna do, if we're not smoothing, we're gonna say many container is equal to menu position, actually no, to desired position. Um, and that would work, that, that gets us snapping very, very quickly. But if we're smoothing, let's do something else. So if smooth, then we're gonna be doing the following. If we're smoothing, let's do mini container anchor position. We're moving the anchor position because this is a rec transform, by the way. It's not um, it's not a normal transform, which is also what it says at the top here. Um, we're gonna do a vector three dot lerp. We like using lerp every time we do some some kind of smoothing mechanics. So let's go ahead and do that. We take the current position, which is anchor position, and then we'll do desired position with the speed, the smooth speed, and that will give us our smooth. So I'd like to try this out. However, we do not have anything to do so, and I don't want to go in the update, populate more of that. Um, so we're going to, to go and hook up our buttons right away. Where is our buttons? It's in the, yeah, in this. And our controller is down here in the menu controller. So here's what we wanna do. We're gonna go straight up in the first one. Here we have a start. This would actually change the scene and we don't have something for that, oh, okay, sorry. Let's go back and actually add something for changing the scene. All right, so we got two new functions over here, start game, which loads the game scene, whatever it's gonna be, and then quit game, and that's gonna do an application dot quit. That does not work in the inspector, but it works when you build your game. Um, yeah, now we have what we need. So let's go ahead on our start menu. I will just simply drag and drop my menu controller. I wanna be having the start game function I just created. And now let's do quit real quick. And it's gonna be the same thing, but with our second function. And where it gets interesting is right here under the shop because that's a whole new menu. Um, let's go under the menu controller, yep, again. We're going to be moving menu. Now, which one is it? So we are on our shop text and also button at the same time. We wanna go that way, which is our shop. Which one is that? So if we go under our menu container, we have main and then we have shop. So that's zero and that's one right here. So let's go to menu one. Now we'll be closing that off. Do we need anything right here? We're in the shop container. All these buttons right now, they're not configured to work and that's gonna be a little bit for later, but we do have something that's supposed to take us back to this menu. So let's go on our back button, menu controller. We're gonna go here and say move menu. This one, we're gonna go to zero. Why? Well, because it goes back to the main one and we don't have anything for option, but let's go on their option right now. Um, go under this back button again, do the same exact thing. This one is going to send us again to zero. And I'll quickly just add something in my um, main so I can head over to option. And you guys can see the transition in between here and like a, a weird diagonal order. It's just gonna be a button say at the very top right. What maybe, yeah, maybe 50 in margin. And say 300 by 300 is a little bit big. So 250, 250 could work. Delete that. Okay, it's gonna be a button. Right now, I won't put any graphics on it, um, but I'm going to make sure that if you click on it, that's actually where I'll be ending today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna download the code, you can find it on the website. You can like this video. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to have enough XP to download this. And of course, um, as always, if you have any question, jump on Discord. What else could I say? Oh yeah, check out Patreon. <laughs> right. So that's actually, uh, that's it. That's it. So guys, I'll see you tomorrow. And um, yeah, we got a lot of Android stuff coming up. So hope you're tuned for that. We're going to have fun. Cheers.